Hey there once again YouTube. My name is Ben Ferriolo and I'm a beginner amateur seismologist who hopes to one day make a career out of the responsible and accurate seismic monitoring of volcanic and tectonic hazard areas. If you have not already, please bookmark my website. A link is provided under my email address in the description box below. It contains a huge amount of information including how to read, generate, and understand the many types of seismic and GPS deformation charts hundreds upon hundreds of people use every single day. And it even shows you many other things, including hundreds upon hundreds of seismic plots and images pertaining to a great many seismic events and swarms. If you were interested in earthquakes and volcanoes, you would like my website. So, okay guys, remember my last video about those deep, long period, high frequency events, which I named DLP HF events? And that's just my name for it, guys. That's not the official name. But if you look at, look at the characteristics of these events that are occurring off the coast of Hawaii, off the coast of Pahala, uh, off the, what is that, southwestern coast, I believe, of the Big Island of Hawaii, you will notice that they are deep, they are long period events, and they contain mid to high range frequencies. So technically, you can call them deep, long period, high frequency events, and people should understand and know what you're talking about because... Usually when you hear a name like that, like let's say deep long period low frequency tremor, that would be like a deep harmonic tremor or volcanic tremor, right? So usually a lot of the names for things in seismology, not a lot, but a, a good amount of them are characteristics. People name events after their characteristics. Like what, what about low frequency earthquake? Well, that's, a, that's an earthquake with low frequency characteristics, right? So, this is a deep, long period, high frequency event. It occurred twice yesterday, guys. It occurred twice. Hey, it looks like a geyser is about to pop off. Before I talk about that, also, there was another earthquake in Hawaii on the northern tip of the Big Island of Hawaii. I believe it was a magnitude 3.5. We'll look at that in a little bit. Very strange, because I do not believe I per... I mean, obviously, earthquakes have occurred up there before. But personally, I have never seen one occur there. Very strange location. Many people felt it. We'll get into that in a second. And also, there's a small but strange earthquake swarm taking place at Yellowstone Lake last night. I'll take a look at that first. Why don't we go look at that now? Here we are. It is this thing on .org, the Webby Quarter page for Yellowstone Caldera. You will notice there are some events throughout the day near Madison River, little teeny tiny poppings over there. But down at Yellowstone Lake, I looked at LKWY, right? And I said, oh, you know, that could be something on the surface. They look like earthquakes, obviously. LKWY is terrible with surface noise, guys. Terrible. And I'm not just saying surface noise. I'm talking about surface events. Like, I don't even know what they're doing over there. Just weird, weird, weird things pop up on LKWY that don't show on any neighboring station. So, obviously, they're surface events. But looking at these, looky, looky, we got... A little bit of an earthquake swarm. And I say a little bit because, you know, there are some higher magnitudes in here that did travel many, many miles, so we know that they're real. But a lot of what you're seeing is very teeny, tiny popping. Um, not all of it. Here. Okay, so here's borehole 208, right? Here's borehole 208. We're going to compare with YLA real quick. Just the webby quarter for YLA, which is... I believe, let's see, looking at borehole 208 from the north, that would be to the southeast, about maybe 5, 10 miles or so from borehole 208. And here's YLA. 208, YLA. 208, YLA. Except the times aren't matched up. Oh. So you can't really compare them because the times aren't really matched up on here. Notice how right here is 1900. Oh, right here is 1830. Dang it, that sucks. But we will take a look at it. It, it. That doesn't really matter because I have the seismic program waves and we could compare data streams a lot better than just using the online web recorders. So why don't we go look at that now? And also, as of 12.28 p.m. Pacific Time, March 30th, 2019, they are not reporting any of the earthquakes that occurred at Yellowstone Lake today. None of them. They're not even reporting, not even one. They are reporting just one lonely earthquake for the Yellowstone area down past the Tetons, actually. And it was a very shallow and negative 2.4 kilometers in depth. It was a magnitude 1.9. Apparently, somebody felt it. Apparently, somebody felt it. Let's see here. One person reported feeling it. One person. Very strange, very strange location. But that's not what I'm trying to get into today. Um... Again, uh, they are not reporting any of these earthquakes for last night's earthquake swarm. And it does definitely look like an earthquake swarm. I don't know why I clicked that. I just pulled up the wrong data. I hate it when I do that. 
Let's go to Ben Folder. Let's go to four videos. 3.30. There we go. Pull up Borehole 208. And let's open the day stream for that. All right. So here's Borehole 208. Let's move forward just a little bit. And now I'm just going to pull this down as so. Do that like that. Turn Persistent Rescale Offset Overlap to 95. And we do not need a filter. So first, and it's shown the analysis window up here. Okay. Going up to about 300 amplitude count, we did have a low frequency earthquake. At least that's what it appears to be. We do have much weaker frequencies going up to about 20 hertz or so. Very strange earthquake. Very, very strange. Uh, I don't know. This one showed on surrounding stations. Look at the amplitude. 4,000 amplitude count. That's extremely high for this to be ice quakes or anything like that, right? So this is definitely an earthquake, a low frequency earthquake. Look at the power range, guys. Look at that. Look at that. Let's go down here and look. Many low frequency events are occurring at Yellowstone, or they were occurring last night. Now, let's just check out the dominant frequencies of this one just real fast. Look at that. Yes, this is at Yellowstone, guys. Going up to about 1,000 amplitude count. This one did show on Serenic stations as well which we will get into that in just a second in the seismic program waves. Most of these events did not really show very well. I'm going to say maybe 15 to 20% showed on neighboring stations while the rest didn't. And that's basically because if these really were real seismic events, their amplitudes are still extremely small. So the epicenter is likely to be like right where borehole 208 is, like right in that area. Okay. I I don't even know what that is, guys. I really cannot even venture a guess at all because I'll probably be, be wrong. Let's check out the dominant frequencies. I'm guessing it's a low frequency. Yeah, it is, guys. Dominant frequency rests at 1.4 hertz while it starts to rise at 1.1 hertz and starts to die down at about 2 hertz or so. But we do have some weaker frequencies going well beyond that. But it is looking like that is a low frequency event. Notice the dominant lower frequency with barely any weak frequencies going above that. Interesting. Very interesting, guys. We did have some very interesting events last night at Yellowstone. Look at that. Look at that. Look at those near perfect waveform oscillations. With rounded peaks, which I thought was very interesting. Almost perfectly rounded peaks. Very smooth. And going forward, we do see another low frequency event right here very interesting let's keep going let's use the spectrogram shall we let's go through the whole night and then i'll get into the program waves in just a second so there's one there and then all of a sudden started to increase like crazy right around 8 utc or so which was last night keep going forward some of these events do have some slightly higher frequencies here's that event i just showed but most of them do carry dominant frequencies around one to two hertz let's take a look at this one right here Look at that one, going up to 1,500 amplitude count. Wow. Wow, that's, you know, these are occurring pretty strong for what I originally thought them to be. I believe this is definitely seismic in nature. This is not any type of surface event or anything like that at all, guys. Look at that. That's strange. Going up to about 500 amplitude count or so. Yeah, that's about 520. Uh, go forward, let's go forward, go forward, go forward. More low frequency events throughout the night. We have another one right here. Let's check this one out with an elongated tape. So this is a very strange event. Look at this one right here. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on at Yellowstone last night, guys. I do not know, but something was definitely taking place underneath the lake last night. Aha, uh -huh, what's this right here? Multiple events or a tremor like of wow. Okay, um, wow, wow, guys, are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? A 956.10 UTC, dominant lower frequencies, seems to be slightly emergent. It looks like a tremor-like event. I'm not saying it's harmonic or volcanic tremor, guys, I'm not saying that. Please do not think I am, because I'm not. But, it does have some interesting characteristics to it. Starts at about... 1.2 hertz and ends at about 2.3 hertz, but there are some weaker frequencies going well beyond that. Again, this is a low frequency event. Quite elongated, too. Lasted a, a good amount of time. Yeah, very interesting. Look at that, guys. Let's look. Let's zoom in just real quick at the first half. Okay, that's very interesting. I'm just going to move on. 
let that simmer for a bit. Let me know what you think. Oh, and then we have a high frequency earthquake right here. Look at that. We do have a high frequency earthquake possibly connected to what's going on. I don't know. Keep going forward. Then we have a bunch more poppings throughout the day. Let's go right here. Very interesting low frequency events, guys. There, Most of them are very weak. Most of them are very weak. Some of them are even down to like 100 amplitude count, 50 amplitude count. But there are some. There was one low frequency event that went up to almost about, what was it, like 4,000 amplitude count? Something like that. Let's check this out. Strange low frequency events occurring again at Yellowstone. Going up to about 200, 300 amplitude count for that one right there. As seen on Borehole 208. This one looks more like a regular volcanic tectonic earthquake right here. Which, uh, ah, never mind. Never mind. This could, could still be a low frequency event. Dominant lower frequencies, but there are weaker frequencies going well beyond that. Let's see. Yeah, the frequencies are a little bit higher than before. Let's go back to the spectrogram, shall we? And let's zoom out one more time. Let's just go through the day. Okay, a lot of them, guys. We got a lot of them. Oh, wow. And you can tell a lot of them, the main energy, a lot of the energy is remaining below the 5 hertz line. You notice that? Meaning that almost all of these, probably all of these, are low frequency events. Except there are a few higher frequency earthquakes popping off here and there. So, we got something going on at Yellowstone Lake, guys. Very interesting. Nothing too major, though, since the amplitudes are very small. Very, very small. But it, nonetheless, it's definitely something to keep an eye on, guys. Because you never know. You never know when maybe something and when maybe not. So, it's always good to keep your eyes open and keep your possibilities open as well. Very interesting. Some of these waveforms look very similar to the Green River, Wyoming. In southwest Wyoming, that earthquake swarm. If you haven't seen that, go to my website. Link is below my email address in the description box below. Uh, go to Seismic Events. Quick quake swarms, and I believe it's one of the pages on that page. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's go back to spectrogram. Let's see. We're almost nearing the end of this swarm or increase in size, low frequency seismicity. Excuse me. Uh, so, uh, wow. I don't know what this is. Uh, that does not look like any type of real seismic event. Frequencies are too high and it's too emergent. Uh, I don't know. That's iffy. That's iffy right there. Going forward, going forward, more low frequency events, guys. Lots of them last night. Lots of them. Lots, lots, lots. Woohoo! Man, this is very interesting, guys. Actually, you know, one of my favorite seismic events to study is low frequency um, earthquakes and tremor. Those are my favorite. And you'll probably you probably know that because I'm always looking out for them. Because <laughs> really, of course, low frequency events can occur through other processes, but a lot of the time, a lot of the time they're usually it usually has to do with volcanism, unless something else is going on, you know, like some type of gas release, methane release, I don't know, guys, I'm not a professional at this, I just show you the data and tell you my interpretations, which, by the way, my interpretations are sometimes very wrong, so, take everything I say with a grain of salt, pretty please, this looks like a distant earthquake with, oh, that's interesting. Very interesting right there. And we do have another event uh, as the most recent data stream. We do have another event coming in right now at about 1916 UTC, but that's pretty much it. So what do you guys think about these events, these low frequency events occurring at Yellowstone Lake? Very intriguing, huh? Very intriguing. Okay, so let's go to the program waves and just quickly see if some of these events show on stations that are miles away. Okay, so this is very strange. I've opened up the data streams from Borehole 208, YLA, Borehole 944, YTP, and YLT, which are the stations that are all around Yellowstone Lake. So we should see, if these are really seismic, we should see these appearing on the distant stations at least a little bit, especially if they go up to 3,000 amplitude count almost. Like this event right here, this low frequency event is not showing on any surrounding stations. That's weird. Seeing that it goes to about 3,000 amplitude count and shows pretty strong on borehole 208, guys. I don't know why. It is possible this showed up a little bit on borehole 944, but that, that could just be a coincidence. Maybe. I don't know. Let's look to see if any other ones showed up at all. Maybe this one. Maybe this one, but it's just it barely. Maybe. Maybe. Um... YLA, Borel 208, that's possible. 
it looks like this right here. Yes, yes. It is looking like you can see it right here. A tiny bit on borehole 944, but mainly this event on borehole 208 going up to about 625 and, uh, excuse me, amplitude count did show on YLA and YTP just barely though, just barely, but it did look like these seismic waves did travel. That's what at least looks like. That's at least what it looks like, guys. Those aren't really appearing much, not much, not much. It is possible that this one did appear on surrounding stations. You can kind of see a correlation between the increase in activity on all these data streams, except for YLT. Keep going forward, keep going forward, not seeing much. Oh, this is a stronger one on Borehole 208, which also appeared on YLA, Borehole 944, and YTP. You can see a change in activity on YTP as well, around this exact time that we should see the change. And do, 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 do. not much, not much, not much, not much of a change, not much of a change. So I don't know why Borehole 208 is pretty much the only station seeing most of these events. And uh, ah, this is very interesting. So it looks like this event occurred near YLA first and then showed up on Borehole 208. That's strange. So what do you think is going on at Yellowstone Lake, guys? What do you think it is causing these strange low frequency events? This one occurred near YTP, it looks like, and, and then traveled to YLA and then Borehole 208. Very interesting. Very interesting. And it looks like this low frequency event here started at YTP, even though YTP, YTP doesn't record events very well, guys. I'm even for earthquakes that occur really close to the seismic station, I'm not happy with how it records events. I don't know why, maybe it's faulty, I don't know. But it did show up on y YTP first, and then appeared on YLA, and then Borehole 208. So that's very interesting. So some of these could be seismic in nature. Some of them very well could be, but I have no idea what could cause it at all. So let me know what you think below, and I need to now move on to something a little more important as of right now. All right, here's the past 24 hours of seismic activity, all magnitudes, for earthquake.usgs.gov for Hawaii as of 12.45 p.m. Pacific Time, March 30th, 2019. Now, I want you to notice something. We do have a diamond down here. Notice how all earthquakes are usually labeled with circles. These diamonds, if you pay attention to earthquake.usgs.gov and my videos, you'll know what those are. Those are the DLPHF events, the deep long period high frequency events. Now, remember, that's not the official name for them, but it's the name that I made up. It should be the official name because that name is directly in line with what the characteristics of the events are. Okay, so we see other event reported. All of these other events, notice we did have a swarm in this area right here where the other DLPHF events have occurred in the past. Just like I talked about in my last video. If you have not seen that, please go to my videos or you could go to my website. Go to the Seismic Events drop down menu, click Hawaii and look at the most recent post. I am going to make an analysis page showing these events. I'll be doing that tonight. Um, but again, 24 earthquakes in the past 24 hours, with most of them occurring in a very short time frame, and a lot of them occurring off the coast of Pahala, starting to get closer to the coast, actually. A lot of them occurring 41 kilometers, 37 kilometers, 48 kilometers, 38 kilometers, 44 kilometers, 41 kilometers, 39 kilometers. Look at how deep these earthquakes are, guys. You noticing this? You notice that? Well, I had a guess. I was like, oh no, more of those DLPHF events have occurred. And I was right. Here is, are the uh, web recorders for the state of Hawaii. If it'll load, let's go to PPLD and see if we see any long period events in the past 24 hours. Yes, we do. We see two, actually three more events. We see an event right here, an event starting right there, and an event right here. This you see right here, ending right here, that's an earthquake. That is the magnitude 3.5. So let's do the magnitude 3.5 first, and then I'll get into these events occurring down here. So the magnitude 3.5 occurred on the northern tip of Hawaii. Very strange. Let's zoom in up there. I do not believe there are any volcanoes exactly on the northern tip. I know here's Mauna Kea, and I forget what uh, volcano is right here. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. I may be wrong, though. There may be a volcano up here, but I'm not exactly sure. Magnitude 3.5 at 11.8 kilometers in depth with multiple did-you-feel-it reports. 
Multiple reports, guys. 132 people reported feeling this magnitude 3.5 at 11.8 kilometers in depth. Although the status is automatic, I am guessing that the uh, characteristics of the event are pretty accurate. I believe it was probably around a magnitude 3.5, maybe a magnitude 3.8, I'm going to guess. The depth may be wrong. And no, and when it, remember, always look for review status. If it says automatic, then a computer has added it. And you can't trust computers 100%, right? That's why you see data changing sometimes. That's why you see them either down, downgrading earthquakes or upgrading earthquakes. Although I do agree USGS does downgrade events a little bit too much. In my opinion, they do a little bit too much, but they do upgrade events too. Like the magnitude 5.5 in Hawaii, which was the largest earthquake to occur since the eruptions calmed in 2018. That magnitude 5.5 was originally a magnitude 5.3. So I thought that was very interesting. Okay, so why don't we go take a look at the seismic data to the closest seismic station to this magnitude 3.5 that occurred at 11.8 kilometers in depth on the northern tip of the Big Island of Hawaii, KOHD. Here we have a small bit of this data stream from the closest seismic station to the magnitude 3.5 on the northern tip of the Big Island of Hawaii. Notice you can barely see it on the web recorder because it's right on the edge right here, but we do get a good look. Let's go to the spectrogram. Let's change persistent rescale off. Overlap 95. I'm going to do a maximum frequency range of 55 hertz this time. Um, even though it only goes to about 50 hertz for this seismic station. Notice dominant frequencies. Let's check out the spectra plot. Dominant frequencies rest. Oh yeah, they're high. They're, they're pretty high. Let's turn that off. Yep, dominant frequencies are between 2 hertz and 16 hertz. Definitely not a low frequency event at, by any means at all. Uh... Turn log frequency, log power back on, turn the spectrogram back on. It seems just to be a normal magnitude 3.5. However, it looks, in my opinion, and I'm not a professional, but in my opinion, it does look a little bit stronger. Again, possibly magnitude 3.8, maybe even a uh, magnitude 4.0 at the max, but I don't think it could reach 4.0. Don't think that that's what it was, but you never know. You never know these days, guys, and there it is right there. Very strange looking. Very, definitely very strange looking uh, throughout the day. There were some other weird poppings throughout the day. I don't even know. These don't look like they're seismic really at all. They, eh, they kind of, but they have mid-range frequencies, basically no lower frequencies at all. That doesn't mean they're not seismic, but I don't know. But again, then again, there's the magnitude 3.5. Now, I want to go back, go back here, go to the map once again. Now, remember I told you that these earthquakes down here, although they are being reported as earthquakes right now, notice how there's only one diamond, which means other event. Well, actually, the diamonds can mean anything other than an earthquake. Like, they can mean an explosion, nuclear explosion, rock burst, mining collapse, anything like that. Anything that's not an earthquake is marked with a diamond. And, okay, so, and here's another diamond right here, other event, notice, magnitude 2.8, other event, because USGS has no idea what these events are. However, many of these that are part of the deep long period high frequency events are being labeled as earthquakes. Personally, I believe, yes, there are earthquakes occurring, and their depths could be right. They could be right on the depths, but it is still one event. It is still one event, well, actually, there were three of them uh, in the past 24 hours, I believe. But it's still just one event, guys. It's still just one event. So what I want to do is let's go here. I did save some images of some webby quarters that I would like you to see. So I have saved some webby quarters from all across the station. Uh, excuse me. From all across the island, not the station. From all across the island of Hawaii, the big island, guys. Now check this out. This is uh, not just from stations bunched together. This is from stations from the southern coast to the northern coast. Kind of in a straight line. I tried to pick stations that were in a straight line going all the way north. But I uh, wasn't able to exactly. But just know that these are all from across the big island. Many, 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 many miles apart, guys. All right, let's go forward. Do you see anything that's correlating? Do you see anything that's correlating? Yeah, you see it? Let's go back. Let's go back. Keep your eye right here, and keep your eye right here. Let's go back. Yep. 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 Those are many miles away, guys. Many, 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 many miles away. So we do see that these are real seismic events, and trust me, do not just use web recorders to do this. 
But when you're dealing with long period events like this that span miles and miles very quickly, you can just use Webby Quarters, just real quick. Not for real analysis and not for actual research or publications, but just saying, you can use them. So, very interesting. We do see that right there. Let's download the data stream. Let's see, this started at, let's see, the 29th. I'm going to do 2200 for the 29th. Let's go to, so 2200 for the 29th. Go there. 2200. 31st there. Okay, let's do HV, PPLD, dash, dash, EHZ, which is the closest seismic station to these events. And then we scroll down, click the link. And it's downloading. Let's take a look at it in the Seismic Program Swarm. All right, so now remember, guys, I am going to make my own analysis page on my Hawaii blog under Seismic Events drop-down menu on my website. I will do one possibly tonight. If not, I'll do that tomorrow morning for sure. Um, but you can see these events right here. Notice this is almost as strong as the ones that occurred in on January 23rd, 2019. Here, let me show you something real quick. Okay, so we're just looking at the Webby quarters real quick. Here are some of these stations. Now, this is for January 23rd, 2019, when I first spotted these quote-unquote other event, as labeled by USGS, and as labeled by me, DLPHF events. Very strange. I was freaking out at first when I first found these in late January. Very odd events, guys. But you can notice they are right here. This is on January 23rd, 2019. Notice the strongest event probably occurred on January 23rd, 2019. This one lasted, got to say, maybe 45 minutes or so. There were a few more throughout the day. Now, let's go to my most recent blog post. Here, right here, are the most recent events that occurred on March 27th through the 28th of this year, which was just three days ago. Two to three days ago. You can see multiple ones. Here's one right here. Here's one right here. And here's another one right here. And then there was another one, I believe, that occurred later on after that occurred. But I did not show that on here. And now let's go to the program swarm with the most recent data stream we are seeing as of today. Another set of events. One, two, and three. Let's go back. Let's go back. Now remember, this is March 29th right here. This is today. Or yesterday. Actually, it's the 30th and the 29th because I'm looking at a little bit more of the data stream. Then here's on the 27th through the 28th. One, two, Three. Actually, there were four that day, but uh, you'll see where I'm getting at this. Then on January 23rd, 2019, when I first saw these events ever occur, you can see one, two, three, four. So there were four events on January 23rd, 2019, four main events. I mean, obviously, there were multiple earthquakes occurring as part of these one tremor events, um, if you know what I'm saying. But notice there are four here, four here on this day. Let's go to the size of program swarm, and then we have three here on this day. Could there be, so why are they occurring in episodes? I noticed that these are deep, long period events with high frequency, mid to high frequency characteristics, and they travel very, very far and occur in pairs or bunches. Like there's usually, they, it's usually not just one. Usually not just one. After the magnitude 5.5 that occurred not too long ago, actually, there was just one. But, they usually occur as a sequence, like two, three, or four of them, and then it calms. So, what do you think this could be, guys? What This one looks more like a bunch of earthquakes all stacked together. Look at this, guys. Now, th remember, this is showing on multiple seismic stations all across Hawaii, guys. All across Hawaii. So, the idea that it, this is surface noise is blown out of the water, especially when USGS and HBO... They are reporting these, but they've been very silent. I've been looking at all the reports from HBO and for anything about at all, about these events at all, and they are silent. I remember I did send them an email, which I showed in my last video. They never actually responded with the long period events. They were talking about deep earthquakes, but they never mentioned these. And I specifically asked them in the reply back, I said, well, why are they lasting so long? Why are they lasting almost 40, 45 minutes at times? and seem to either be getting shallower or deeper and they didn't even reply they didn't even reply back to that because personally i think they don't know and you know scientists and their pride uh, i'm not saying they're bad guys guys i'm just saying you know scientists kind of sometimes think they know everything sometimes you know they they can have a lot of pride it's just how the world works sadly 
Notice how this event is much different than the previous events. Actually, it's not much different. It's very similar, but it lasts much longer, guys. It lasts much longer. Still has mid to high breach frequencies. Very strange looking, too. Let's go to the seismogram plot. Here's the seismogram plot of these events. Let's look at the first burst right here. Uh-oh. Got to turn persistent rescale offset overlap to 95. I forgot to do that. There we go. Here's the first burst going forward. Slowly going forward. They do look like earthquakes, don't they? Because I believe there are multiple earthquakes taking part of this one tremor. So it is an earthquake swarm with a tremor as well. Now it is possible this could be... Okay, so get this. If the depths are correct, if they are right about the depths, then this is definitely some type of mass. And I'm talking... Because these are occurring deep, guys. For so this to show this long, this strong... Because remember in the in the email they said that um, it's near vertical, the conduit feeding Kilauea and all the volcanoes. It's near vertical, right? So if it's if these are occurring near the same depth as that conduit, near the same exact area, don't you think it could be part of that conduit, right? So if these long period events are occurring inside that conduit, that is likely with some getting shallower and some getting deeper. Doesn't that sound like a huge, huge, massive amount of magma traveling at very high speeds? That is what I think it is. These are Remember, these are two theories. That was the first theory. Here's the second theory. The second theory is that the depths are completely wrong and that these are occurring right underwater, right on the surface of the ground. Meaning that these could be landslides. Yeah, um, that could be. Remember, these are only two theories. Both of them could be completely wrong, but these are likely theories. Um, so let me know what you think. I know some people are worried about the Helena slump or Helena slump or however you say it. Um, I'm not too worried about it right now. I'm I, sorry. I don't get mad at me guys because I'm just saying this is what I believe. I'm not too worried about that right now. But with these increasing near that area, I would keep an eye on the entire area. Definitely. I would keep an eye because these are increasing. Remember, even the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory told me that the deep earthquakes are increasing. Now, they didn't mention the long period tremor and the long period events that are going on recently. But they did say that these deep earthquakes, which I assume they were mentioning this, are they're increasing. And I agree with them. They are definitely increasing in strength and in mag uh, not magnitude and in number, I mean. Because it is occurring like every day now, guys. Every freaking day now almost. We are seeing these strange, deep, long period, high frequency events. And you can tell, you know, if you say to a scientist, hey, what are these DLPHFs? They're not going to know what you're talking about. Because it's what I named them. But if you explain to them they're deep, long period events with mid to high range frequency characteristics, then really, deep, long period, high frequency event is a good name. It fits the characteristics perfectly. So let's zoom in on this one. This one lasted approximately, let's see, from 748 to 838. Approximately 50 minutes. Yes, 5 zero, 50 minutes right here. Lasted 50 minutes, almost an hour, guys. Definitely one of the longest ones I have seen. And then at about 630, this earthquake was the magnitude 3.5 on the northern tip of the Big Island of Hawaii, which we already looked at. We already took a look at that. It has a very strange P wave arrival. Very odd. Very odd. Uh, but let's go up here. Let's go down here. Yep. Look at all those events, guys. I'm loving this stuff. Woo! My goodness. What is causing this? So do you think, A, the depths are correct and that this is some type of huge, massive magma transport signaling something could be changing? Or two, could the depths be absolutely incorrect? absolutely wrong and they, these could be massive landslides possibly the ground destabilizing for a major landslide who knows who knows guys but i'm just saying as a scientist you cannot say something 100 percent unless you actually have all the facts in front of you i mean it's good to have a little faith guys it's good to have your theories and have a little faith in your theories but if there's anything there are some problems with these theories guys there are some major problems so i don't know I don't know, guys. You you let me know what you think, because I really want to hear what you guys think about these deep, long period, high frequency events that have been increasing like crazy lately. And most recently, as of 1.05 p.m. Pacific time, March 30, 2019, not seeing too much of Yellowstone. A few quakes here and there. Again, we did have some quakes last night, 
very strange earthquakes. Uh, I, I don't even know what to call them because they're low frequency events, but some didn't show on the surrounding stations and some did. I don't know. Very confusing. In the past 24 hours, they are reporting 278 earthquakes. Oh, by the way, I watched the movie Volcano last night, guys. You know the movie Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones? Woo-wee! I love that movie, guys. There are some people that are like, oh, it's so terrible. I love it. I really like it. I think, actually, the acting wasn't too bad. Could have been a little better, but the acting wasn't too bad. You know, I like Tommy Lee Jones. He's a good actor. Um, love the lava, by the way. Love the lava. Love what they did with uh, collapsing the building. That was pretty funny. Let's see, anything, little tiny, tiny, Mammoth Lakes and uh, Long Valley Super Volcano has been pretty quiet lately, pretty quiet. There has been some swarming near Clear Lake Volcano up here, near the, now remember, the Geysers, California. Notice how it says the Geysers, California. Well, this is the largest geothermal pumping operation in the world, where they gain a huge amount of energy from a massive magma chamber just right beneath the surface. Let's go up. Not seeing much. There actually were some earthquakes reported the other day for Mount Hood. It wasn't really Mount Hood. It was north of Mount Hood, right in this area. Multiple earthquakes. One, I believe, being a 2.5 or a 2.9. The Seattle area. Forks, Washington saw magnitude 2.1 and negative 0.9 kilometers in depth right here on the Olympic Peninsula. Then we had a 1.6 at 26.1 kilometers in depth. But that's pretty much it. Let's zoom to the world one more time. And then we did have an earthquake near Mayotte near the epicenter of the Mayotte event. Then we had another earthquake, oh, which was a magnitude 5.2 in Greece, supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth. Then Russia got hit by 4.7, and then Afghanistan got a 4.1, very interesting. South of South Korea, in Japan, there's a 5.1 at 24.4 kilometers in depth. Then there's a 6.1 in Papua New Guinea at 57 kilometers in depth. Well, basically 57 kilometers. And that's pretty much it for now, guys. Let's zoom into Alaska, see if there's anything in Alaska. Lots of quakes as usual. There's been a huge increase in seismicity right in this area here. Remember, there are some unmonitored volcanoes right here in Alaska. Could be connected to volcanic activity. I looked at the data real quick, which I might post a do a blog post on. Remember, guys, I can't post everything. I can't post all my research because it would just take way too long, guys. I have to pick and choose. But usually I put out about 80, 90% of my research. Um, but it, most of these did carry high frequency characteristics, no low frequency background tremor that I have seen as of yet. So that's a good sign, but still keep your eye on this area and on in, excuse me, Hawaii off the coast of Pahala. Look for more deep earthquakes occurring between 30 kilometers and 50 kilometers in depth. And if you see those earthquakes occur around that depth, automatically go to volcanoes.usgs.gov. I did not mean to do that. <sighs> oh my god come on okay so look for earthquakes that are between 30 kilometers to 50 kilometers in depth reported by usgs um mainly near pahala notice there are many seamounts of volcanoes in this area so when you see those go to volcanoes.usgs.gov go to the top of the page select a volcano and go to kilauea or mauna loa make sure that you have Filter instruments or instruments visible or whatever it says right here. Make sure seismometer is blue so it shows all the black triangles, which are the seismometers. Click the web recorder and then you will see if there are any long period events, which are easily seen on the web recorders. Very easily seen. So it appears there were three in the past 24 hours, with the first one being quite strong. So we will keep an eye on this, guys. I will be back in a little bit. Let me know what you think of this video and my previous videos and my website. And don't forget to check it all out. Remember, I do have multiple blogs on my website, so don't forget to keep an eye on that. I will be back soon. God bless, and have a great day, guys.